To understand furnace testing, let's start with a real life test. And here we've got a door where the client was hoping for a one hour fire rating, but in fact the door failed in around 15 minutes. So at this point in time, the video is speeded up, but the door is being progressively exposed to uh, hotter and hotter temperatures inside the furnace following the standard fire curve. And the door starts curling and peeling away. Then you have flame through and an overall failure. And this just illustrates you roughly how a fire test works. And we're going to now look at the different aspects of it so you can understand how it occurs and what is done. Morning, everyone. I'm here at Ignis Testing and with the team, Marisa, Dirk and Johan. And we're here today to talk about fire testing because it's something that a lot of consultants don't know about. So here we're going to learn about how do tests occur, how do furnaces operate and similar aspects. This is a three by three meter furnace designed and constructed according to the European standard for furnaces. The furnace is well insulated. It has a chimney or a flue where the gases can expand, but also a controllable chimney with which you control your differential pressures in the furnace. It is required according to the standards that you have a neutral axis for the differential pressure, uh, below which is negative and above which is positive. And to control that, you need to control it with the, Im, the, the flow of the air going in and coming in and going out so that you can get the differential pressure set at the correct level. Inside the furnace, once your sample is set up in front, this is all closed, of course, and your thermocouples will be 100 millimeters away, more or less, from the sample that you are testing. Here will be two burners. We using, are using diesel burners, and the burners are flaming towards that side. So it's very important to note that you don't flame the test sample directly. It is only radiation and convection heat that is emitted towards the sample and that is what you are testing. Usually you only need five thermocouples. Uh, we use ten because most of the time during testing you will lose about one or two thermocouples. We can replace them while we test so that we keep up to the total number. Uh, this is the first furnace we constructed. It is mostly used for door testing and for smaller panels or so, uh, walls, if you can classify it as a panel. The panel that we have installed here is set up for load bearing. This is the first time we will do a load bearing test. It's an experimental test for load bearing. The load on top is a uniform distributed load, which will be calculated by the fire engineer what is required for the specific test. In front, you will see the insulation thermocouples Usually it's five, one in the center and then the others on the diagonals at halfway distances. What we do here, here is we repeat it twice. We do it on both sides. We have 10 measurement points, two of five, and you take the average of them. There is a limit. If you exceed that for one, that you will have to discard the test. But we have never found that being a problem. It is covered with these fire resistant fabrics. The code says it must be asbestos, but you don't get that anymore. And this is what is called the insulation criterion for testing 
fire resistance, which is 140 degrees above ambient average, and if it exceeds that, then it's a failure. In terms of the load bearing, the failure will be when if, the, if it starts buckling and the center horizontal deflection is more than the height over 30, that will be a failure. And that is what we're going to test with this sample. Integrity is when you get an opening or a crack of more than 10 millimeters, but it is to a certain extent subjective, as is stability. But, and that is where the difficulty comes in how to judge a failure, a complete failure. One thing with furnace testing is you need to test a system and every part of the system is important. And joints are often the weak aspect of a system, the joints fail first. So Dirk, just tell us a bit about joints and joint failure. Our experience with joints are that in terms of panels, especially panels, the panel will probably last for two, three, four hours, but the joints open. And as soon as you get oxygen going into the joints, you get flaming. It, it happens quite quick on the inside. If you get failure on the outside, you will suddenly start seeing a flame running up the joint. And strange enough, that flaming can keep on going for quite a while. And it is amazing how much flaming you might get, even if you have a non-combustion material inside of the sealing, the joint sealing material, if it is not the correct material. We, have fa we had failures where everything was perfect except the joint sealer started to flame. If you go to doors where you have your rebates, the failure sort of one could say 100% of the time will start at the top where the temperature is usually a slight bit higher and you also have a higher differential pressure. That is where the flame starts, wants to start going out at the rebate. And that is where most of your failures start at the top. We also measure the temperature of the flame around each and every door test that we do to have a collection of information maybe for further research in future. Although in South Africa, frame temperature is not a criteria, but it is in the European Code a criteria. I think it's maximum 350 degrees for a frame. If you have a metal frame, it is quite possible to exceed that limit very quickly. In a door, if it's a double door, your rebate in the center becomes your Achilles heel of, of a door test. And it's very important to get that right. The other effect that we have actually discovered, and it is after some research quite clearly stated in the European and other codes, the difference if you do a door test between testing the door opening away from the heat or the fire or opening into the heat. We have had some instances here where it passes opening outwards easily half an hour. If it opens inwards, it didn't even make 15 minutes. So there is a substantial difference between how a door is tested. And it is important for the fire engineer to take note when he reads the test report to make sure whether that door was tested open in or open out, depending on where the door will be utilized that was tested. It, one can, for a door that opened inwards, say if it is an hour or half an hour door, that it will suffice opening outwards, but not the other way around. For you as a fire consultant, there are a couple of things you should be careful of, because there's many ways that people may 
doctor their test, improve the performance of the test or the material by setting it up in a certain way. So Dirk, can you just tell us about what are some of the things that people may do that consultants should be careful of when interpreting test certificates where perhaps the result or the test, um, yeah, the test result looks better than it would actually in reality? Well, the first thing obviously is changing the report itself by scratching out something and writing something else in it, but I hope that doesn't happen ever. And for that reason also we limit our test reports to five years validity to make sure that it comes either back for retesting or that one just ascertain whether it is still the same thing that you are uh, selling, that you have tested. One thing that one must be clearly look at in the report and you must see it in the photos and if it's not stated it is your responsibility to inquire where it, whether it was done. It's in the door, it must be tested with the iron mongery. If there's a lock in it, it must be tested with a lock. If, even if it is just a normal mortise lock, you must test it, test it with a mortar lock, mortise lock. That is very important. When it comes to a double door, it's very important. If you see bolts fixing the door to the frame, and the one leaf to the other, you know that that is not correct because that is not the way the doors are supposed to be installed. Unless it is clearly stated that you have a fixed leaf and a leading leaf. So, but look at the photos, see if it is stated in the report and if it's not clearly stated then you must inquire about it. And it's important also to, to, to make sure that in the report if you present it to the engineer or to the authorities that you don't take out something that's important. If it shows that it was in the test report, the photo, if it shows it's a door opening outwards that was tested, then you make sure that that information goes with the test. Yeah.